Hi everyone, welcome back. Now we're going to chat about transfers once again on the channel today. We're going to focus in on what I think is the position of highest priority in terms of bringing in someone new right now at Celtic. Right back. There were a lot of promising signs on Wednesday night against Meacheland. I really came away from the game feeling much better than when I'd gone to it. I know the result wasn't what we wanted in terms of a victory, but I thought there was real promising signs in the way we moved the ball, the areas we got into, the, the fact that we were able to find you know those intricate passes into the attacking mids. The space our fullbacks received and also the way we switched the play from left to right and right to left, looking for that opening, was probably the most encouraging aspect of the match. Probably, apart from Beaton and Barkas's howlers and losing the head, etc., the least encouraging aspect was the final ball, the bit of quality from those positions, left back and even more so at right back. And I think it's imperative, fancy word, that we sign a top quality right back to come to the club and to get into those areas, but to do something with it. I think it's the most important position at the moment at Celtic. Left back as well, I think we need someone who can start as well to push Greg Taylor, to rival Greg Taylor for that starting berth. I don't think Bolly Bolingoli is the guy. He wasn't good enough two years ago, so I don't see why he'd be good enough now. But yeah, right back is the one we're going to focus on in this video. So what is the latest with regards to Celtic's search for a right back? Because we've been linked with a fair few people over the last few weeks. Now, the reason I'm talking about it today is that once again, we've heard the name George Balduck, the Sheffield United right back. The name that isn't really going away at all. The Daily Record had a report that went out on Wednesday evening saying that Balduck is a priority for Ange Postacoglu. Sasha Boy is another name that's been mentioned. He's the Ren fullback. The chat in France says that that deal is off. We'll go into that more at the end of the video. Also, Derby's right back Nathan Byrne, a new name, I think, to Celtic fans, was mentioned in the Daily Record report, as was Brandon Soppy, the Ren fullback. That one again looks a bit far-fetched I think at this stage and the final player that we've already mentioned on the channel is Royal Antwerp's Aurelio Buta. So that's I think five names if my maths is correct there. Let's delve into certainly the ones that we've not really talked about on the channel too much. We're going to chat mainly about George Baldock and about Nathan Byrne but we'll talk about the other players as well. Two summers ago, back in summer of 2019, we were linked with George Baldock. He was playing with Sheffield United at that stage as well. The difference being that they'd just been promoted from the Championship into the Premier League. We were linked quite heavily with him under Neil Lennon. It didn't come off. We signed Hatim El Hamed and Moritz Bauer as well. And obviously Jeremy Frimpong, to a lesser extent, he grew to be our first choice right back in time. Baldock, meanwhile, went on to play all 38 Premier League matches as Sheffield United finished ninth in the Premier League, and they would have probably finished higher had it not been for COVID. The following season obviously didn't go nearly as well for Sheffield United. Baldock featured in 32 of their 38 league games as they finished rock bottom of the Premier League. So now he's headed back to the Championship and it seems like it might be a good opportunity for him to leave the club. He is 28 years old. He's never played at a higher level than Sheffield United. He's clearly a decent player. He's had a good record in terms of creating goals. He scores the odd goal now and then. But I just think some of the fees that have been mentioned for Baldock, I think a couple of weeks ago, we were chatting between £5 million and £8 million to sign him. Now, bearing in mind he's 28 years old with... Not really much of a sell-on fee if he was to play two or three good seasons at Celtic. I'm not convinced this is a signing that we should be pursuing, but the reports keep coming. It's just a name that isn't going away, so it's really interesting to consider whether Celtic are actually looking at this. I don't think the English market offers us the value for money that, for example, the French market does. I think we know that by now. You will pay a higher premium for players playing even out with the top flight now players like George Baldock playing for a championship team these championship sides can demand 
five, six, seven, eight million pounds for players that are 28 years old and not even complete standouts. It just seems a lot of money for Celtic to spend when budgets are going to be tight this summer on a player who would probably be quite a good player for us, but I just think we could do much better with that money in terms of a player like Brandon Soppy. While Balduck was being relegated in the Premier League, Nathan Burns, Derby County were just about staying up in the second tier of English football, very nearly relegated last season. Byrne played 41 times for Derby in his first season at the club last season. He joined from Wigan a year ago. He's not young either, really, well, in terms of the football context. He's 29 years old. He doesn't really seem to have any injury issues, though, certainly looking at his stats. He's played at least 50 games in most seasons over the last five or six years, so it seems like he would be able to play a lot of football if he came to Celtic. Obviously, we don't want to sign another player who's going to spend a lot of time on the treatment table because we have a fair few of them at the club at the moment. Interestingly enough, Byrne is out of contract at Derby in 12 months' time. Derby are also badly in need of cash at the moment, so it does seem like a deal could be done there to bring him in for maybe a million, a couple of million, which would obviously suit Celtic as well. He strikes me as a backup player, a player who could come in and could fill in if we had injuries or suspensions or whatever at right back and would be able to do a pretty good job at domestic level in most matches. But I don't think signing a right back that's 29 years old from a struggling Derby County side for maybe a million, two million should be seen as our option to pursue for right back. I think bring Burn in as your backup and spend a bit of money on a quality right back ahead of him. That's the way I would look at it. Looking at his pedigree, you know, he has kind of gone around the lower leagues in English football for most of his career. So had Baldock until a couple of years ago. Maybe that's just where we're shopping now, but it just seems like uh, a few of the other options that we've been linked with in mainland Europe seem a little bit more suited to what Celtic need and want. Speaking of which, the chat about the French players does seem to have gone quite quiet. I think it's mainly because of a report from the French outlet Le Keep, which said that Sasha Boy had pulled out of a move to Celtic because of the input and influence of New Lennon Air Quotes, New Lennon to work in them, foreign intermediaries. Try that again. Foreign intermediaries. I think that's uh, foreign meaning our lot like Scottish folks, so seems like that's not going to be happening. Um, not quite sure what the script is with Soppy. I've always thought that seems a bit of a strange one, that would be linked with two Wren right-backs in the same window. It seems like wires have got crossed there, something's been lost in translation at some point. Although, to his credit, the bold Fabrizio Romano does seem to be pretty insistent that Celtic are at least interested in... Uh, to some degree in Soppy. So that's one to watch as well, although the chat is that Lille have stolen a march on the competition for that deal. Aurelio Buta, that chat seems to have been confined to maybe one or two reports about a week ago, not really heard anything else. He's actually probably just behind Soppy for me in terms of the players I'd be most excited about. I remember him from a few Europa League games last season for his club Royal Antwerp. And he looks to have the exact kind of pedigree that we'd want for Celtic. Really pacey, loves to get forward, really good final ball, really good at running players. Very similar to Jeremy Frimpong, a player who we've not replaced at all. In general, I feel I feel pretty relaxed about Celtic's right-back hunt in terms of the players we've been linked with. The thing is, we need to get a player at least in very soon. I mean, that's stating the obvious. I'm not telling you anything new there. But in general, in terms of Celtic's rebuild, I feel much better than I did two or three weeks ago. I think we've signed a number of very good players so far. I think Leila Bada, on early signs, is going to be a really exciting player who will get Celtic fans off their seat. I think Carol Starfelt has all the pedigree that you'd want as well. And obviously, Kyogo Furuhashi looks, from the outset, like a really, really good addition. Now, I'm aware that two of those players haven't played for the club yet, and the other has... I think played 40 minutes, if that. Um, so I maybe jumped the gun a bit in that, but I just, I'm quite excited about those players. I mean, you see the way the team played under Postacoglu with that very defined way of playing 
on Wednesday night. It does fill you with a bit of confidence. I think the fact we've spent big money on those three players I mentioned fills me with confidence as well. Celtic are going to back Postacoglu this summer and I think we're going to see more and more players coming in in the next few weeks. Obviously, right back, we have to sort that imminently. Ideally, I think we need two in. I think, as I say, we need a first choice and a backup as well. We need a left back. We still need another centre back. For me, we need a centre mid. We need at least one left winger and probably a striker as well. So there's lots of work to be done. But I'm feeling much better about it. I think there's definite signs there that Celtic are taking the rebuild seriously, that we're signing quality players and we're signing players from all over, as was promised by Don McKay. I think it's an exciting time to be a Celtic fan. Hopefully you feel the same as well. Remember to subscribe to 67 Heel Heel. If you do feel the same, or even if you don't, a few videos of me and hopefully you'll be feeling a little bit better.